Hi, today I'm going to talk about insulin resistance, what it is, why it's better to think about high insulin or hyperinsulinemia, and why it's really so toxic to you. And it's coming right up. When we talk about insulin resistance, this is the underlying mechanism of both prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And this is what causes the entire disease, which is really important because it increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes and so on. So if you want to know what causes insulin resistance, you can look it up. So on WebMD, for example, they list a huge number of causes. There's obesity, there's inactive lifestyle, carbohydrates, gestational diabetes, family history, smoking, so on and so on and so on. Well, it's really hard to think about it like that because you really can't treat this problem of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes unless you know the cause of it so that you can reverse it. So let's think about what this actually is. When we eat, insulin goes up. That's a hormone produced by the pancreas. And that's in response to the glucose that goes in the blood. The insulin goes to the cell, opens up the door, and allows that glucose to go into the cell so that your liver and your kidney and your heart and your brain all have a source of energy. When we talk about insulin resistance, what we mean is that there's plenty of glucose, but the insulin for some reason is not allowing that insulin to go inside the cell. So it's parked outside. So we say, well, the cell is not responding the way it should be to the insulin. But what causes this? This is the question. And really, we can take a step back and say, in a biological system, what causes insulin resistance? And the important thing to understand is that this is really an example of homeostasis. If you have excessive amounts of anything, it's going to cause resistance because the body wants to get back to its original state. So, for example, if you wear headphones and it's really loud, you start to go a little bit deaf because your body is trying to resist that loud sound. So it's developing resistance, which is by decreasing the sensitivity to the noise, which means your hearing goes down. If you go outside, it's very bright, your pupils constrict, and your body is resisting that light by letting less of it into the eyes. And again, that's an example of resistance. And this is true for multiple biological systems. You can see this in terms of antibiotics, for example. If you have a bacteria and you give antibiotics and you keep giving antibiotics, eventually one of those uh, bacteria becomes mutant and survives. So it becomes a resistant bacteria. But it was caused by the antibiotics. So too much antibiotics causes antibiotic resistance. Just like too much sound causes a resistance to sound and too much light causes a resistance to light. For viruses, it is much the same. You can give vaccines which stimulate the body to produce antibodies. High doses of virus, for example, can produce resistance to the virus. Just like if you get measles, then you develop resistance because the body has resisted it. You look at addictive drugs, for example, you see the same thing where the body resists it. And this is called drug tolerance. That is, if you take a drug such as cocaine and you get an initial high, you only need a little bit of that to, at the beginning. But if you keep taking it, the high goes progressively down and down and down. And your body is resisting that uh, drug. So therefore it takes a higher dose to get the same effect. And this is true for multiple drugs, alcohol, nicotine, narcotics, marijuana, benzodiazepine. So both prescription drugs and drugs of abuse. And they're called drugs of abuse because it takes that higher and higher dose. And again, it just emphasizes that in biological systems, too much drug is going to cause drug resistance. And this is a reinforcing cycle of resistance. That is, if you have persistent high levels of exposure, it causes resistance. If you wind up get, taking more, that is, for example, if you listen to head, uh, music that's too loud on your headphones, that's the persistent exposure causes you to go deaf. Then you turn it up. 
So then you get even more resistance. So the exposure leads to the resistance. The resistance leads to exposure. So let's step back again and say, well, what about insulin resistance? We know that insulin isn't quite working. So is it really the excessive levels of insulin that are causing it? And that's exactly true. We can look at rare tumors called insulinomas where the uh, tumor is secreting too much insulin. And studies show that as you increase the dose of insulin that's just being produced by this tumor, you get more and more insulin resistance. If you surgically resect this adenoma, then the insulin resistance also goes away. But you can do it experimentally as well. If you simply take normal healthy people, such as in this study, and just infuse them with insulin, over time, you can show that they get insulin resistance. In these people where they did this exact study, what they found was that you could increase this uh, level of insulin resistance by about 50%, and these are normal, healthy people. Even if you take um, levels of insulin that are in the normal range, but they're persistent, you get the same thing. In a 96-hour insulin infusion, and you can look at the insulin sensitivity of these normal people, you've already started them on the road to insulin resistance because you understood that it's caused by persistent high insulin levels. In type 2 diabetes, you see the same thing. If you simply give higher and higher doses of insulin, such as in this study, where they took people who were uh, type 2 diabetic and they gave them insulin. They weren't at the start, but they gave them more and more. As they gave them higher and higher doses, they found that they were not getting rid of the glucose normally. That is, they were developing increasing insulin resistance in response to the insulin dose. In the meantime, they gained almost 20 pounds over six months because that insulin was telling the body to gain weight. So the real importance is this. The high levels and the resistance go hand in hand. That is too much noise, so excessive noise leads to deafness, but it's, they're, they're really just flip sides of the same problem. The persistent exposure leads to resistance, which leads to higher persistent exposure. In the case of insulin resistance, therefore, it's much more practical to think about hyperinsulinemia or too much insulin. Because if you just say, hey, what causes insulin resistance, you don't get a good answer. But if I say that the problem is your body has too much insulin over too long a period of time, then you can say, oh, well, if the body has too much insulin, then how am I going to lower that insulin? So it leads you immediately to a solution, which is intermittent fasting, for example, can lower insulin. Low carbohydrate diets can lower insulin. But there's also a myriad of other things such as cutting out um, processed foods, for example, cutting out sugar. There's all these other things. But by thinking about the problem as hyperinsulinemia, as opposed to insulin resistance, leads you immediately to the problem. Just like if you were to say, well, the problem is that you're listening to too much loud noise. You'd say, okay, well, I'll just stop listening. But if you say the problem is deafness, well, what caused that deafness? You would actually have no idea. So that's why instead of thinking about insulin resistance, we should think about the flip side which is hyperinsulinemia. Your body has too much insulin, which is really the same thing, but as a concept leads you to the solution immediately. And more importantly, there's are many, many diseases of too much insulin. That is weight gain, for example, or obesity is a disease of too much insulin, type two diabetes, but also things like polycystic ovary syndrome, as well as the entire metabolic syndrome. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned a little something about insulin, hyperinsulinemia, and insulin toxicity. I'll see you next time.